Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to learn how to use the alignment tool. We're going to learn three different scenarios. The first scenario will be a 3D object and we're going to align that to another piece of geometry to allow us to center the 3D object in our 3D space. The second scenario is a 3D plan and we're going to use the plan of an RC airplane. From that plan we're going to take the aerofoil and align that to the center of the screen using some edges for alignment. And the final scenario will be aligning a reference image to a face of a simple model. So let's have a look at the alignment which is available from any of the workbenches and how we use that tool. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So we've already opened up FreeCAD and we're gonna start a new document. I'm gonna come up to the file and import my file. First going for the 3D import, and then we'll move on to a 2D and then a reference image. We pick our 3D import. I'm using our IGES file. This could be a step file, anything with edges and faces, but if you're using something like an SDL or an OBJ file, then when it comes in, it will be one single mesh, and you may have to convert that to a shape in FreeCAD before we start. So let's pull that in, click on it and open. So it's opened in the view. We're going to align this in the center, which will affect both its placement and orientation. So its rotation will be fixed and the placement will be fixed. If I come to view and toggle axis cross, we can see that the center point is way off in the distance. And this is probably because it's been taken from an assembly where everything's been assembled. And if you think if it's a car assembly and this is a car part, then this could be the center of the car, and this could be somewhere over by the wheel. And what's happened is that when they've exported, they've right-clicked export from the actual assembly, and the center of rotation is this center point of the car. If I try to transform this, you see, well, our transform is over here. To get the center point right, I have to bring it back to here and then fix its center point. We can transform it over, but it's gonna be a bit hard doing this. So the easiest way is to lay down some kind of geometry around the center point, such as a plane in the part or a rectangle in a sketch. Let's use a sketch. So I'm gonna come over to the sketcher and create a new sketch. Make sure that nothing's selected. At the moment, we've got this object selected, so it's gonna put it on the object's X, Y plane. We don't want that, so cancel it and click off. Nothing selected, come out to new sketch, XY plane, and okay. So we're gonna align it to the XY plane. We now need to find our center point. So this axis cross right here, the center of the sketch, this is where we're gonna create a simple sketch. For that, let's just use a rectangle and place the rectangle in here. This is going to be deleted afterwards. We don't need this. Let's hit close. Now I've got the rectangle. We can align this to the rectangle. To do that, I'm gonna use the alignment from the edit, but we need to set this up first. So we need to first select the object that's not going to move, which is the object that this is going to align to which is the sketch. First select that, and then control select the object that needs a line in. Come up to edit, and then pick alignment. You see it's ungrayed now. Click that. On the left hand side, we've got the movable object. On the right hand side, we've got the fixed object. So we need to zoom in to find this. If we zoom in, and we swing our view around and we lose it, then just use the fit all. We'll zoom in, 
make sure we hovered over and just line it kind of to the screen just to make our life easier. Now what we're going to do is select three points on here to align with this rectangle. ReCAD will do the best it can to align it to this rectangle. So for instance, I'm going to take point one up here. You can select a face, you can select vertices, edges, etc. So I'm going to pick point one around about here. And this point will be married up to a point that I'll place on this side. So I'm going to use this vertex here. That's point one. Point two, we'll pick, say, over here. Now, obviously, this is not going to be exact. We don't know the length of this, how far this is away. So I'm just going to pick point two over here. This will align it. So this is for alignment. So this point will be aligned with this one. And then point two will be lined to point two here to get its orientation. Point three, let's place that there. And we can select somewhere on here. So I'm going to pick this point here. So this will make it flat to this rectangle. Once I'm happy, I can right click and align. If I make a mistake or want to cancel it, I can use either of these. So we click align. What's happened is that the part has now moved from out here somewhere and you can see it's in here. So that's use the fit all. And we can see how that's aligned to that rectangle now. I can come in and select the sketch and delete it and we're all aligned. But we haven't affected the center point of this. If I click on this and right click and transform, we see that the center point is still out here somewhere. And you can see how that's been aligned. So we would have to get this in this position to align it here. Just okay that. Let's fix that now. I'm just gonna zoom in. And what I need to do is come over to the part workbench and create a refined copy of this. The refined copy will also remove any redundant edges on here. So any edges, let's say if we had an edge along here, it would be redundant because it divides two faces upon the same plane. Make sure the object is selected, select in the tree view, come up to part, come down to create a copy and come over to refine shape. The original part is still needed. But now we've got this new part, which I can right click and transform. And you see our center point is now fixed. So now let's have a look at this from a 2D point of view, a 2D DXF file, let's say. So again, I've created a new document and I'm going to come up to file and import. And this time I'm going to find a 2D document, a DXF file. And this is a plane plan. So we've got this RC plane plan here. It's imported as a number of shapes. I'm going to select the top view and zoom in. So I want to take these, let's say, and move them to the center point. Let's come up to view and toggle axis cross. So we can see our axis cross is here. So the first thing I want to do is actually group those together. So these here, I just want to create a group for these. That can be easily done over in the draft workbench. I'm going to upgrade all of these because if I select each of these, you notice on the left hand side in the tree view, you can see them as individual shapes. So I'm going to upgrade all of these and then go from there. To do that, I need to select them all. Can't edit and use the box selection. So edit box selection and draw a square around the items that you want. See all the shapes on the left hand side have been highlighted. Once we've got those, we can upgrade those. Now we need to draft workbench to do that. So let's come over to the draft workbench. Now I'm in the draft workbench, I can use the modifications and upgrade. 
See they've changed to wires on the left hand side here. We've still got them selected. Let's do that again. Modifications and upgrade. We now got a block. So this is a compound of all those edges there. Now there are a number of ways to move these items in the draft workbench. We could use the basic move tool. So modifications and move and use our snap in, but that's key to this alignment. I need something to align it to so we can place down a sketch. But in this instance, I've got this edge here, which I'm going to use. If we haven't got something like this, then we just sketch, sketch in here as before. So I need to pick the item that's not going to move. So that's say this line here. Now I need to select the item that's going to be aligned to it, which is this one here. Just control select it because we've got our block. You see a block over there. So we selected the line and then control selected the block. Again, come up to the edit and alignment. You can see if we zoom in, we've got the movable object and the fixed object. And it's just a case of selecting something on here to align with, say, this point here. So that's select, say, this point here, point one, and select this point here. Let's move this over. And just for some alignment, this point here and the end point here. Now we can right click on the movable object and align. We've now aligned our piece into the center. But again, we've still got the same problem. If I go and find the block and right click and transform, you see that a point of rotation is right over here. Let's OK that. We can take this block and downgrade it by come up to modifications and downgrade. Let's downgrade it back to wires. So we can see this now, if I click on one, the wire gets selected. But if I right click and transform that, it's still out here. So that's not fixed the issue. If I try to upgrade that again, by coming up to edit, box selection and highlighting the object. Let's do that again because I've got that point there. Edit box selection. Just highlight that and use the modifications and upgrade. I get the block again. If I right click and transform that, we notice now that the center of rotation is now fixed. So you can see that there. That's OK that. So now we've fixed this and we can move it wherever we want. So we can actually move that off wherever we want and do what we want with it. Remember, we can downgrade this and remove parts from this from our plan. As well as 3D objects and 2D objects, we can actually do the same with reference images. Let's say we had this object here. I want to import a reference image and align it on this plane here. So against this face. We can't select the face and come up to file and import and find our reference image and double click it. It will just be aligned to one of the base planes. It won't be aligned to that face. I'm just going to double click it and add some scaling in here using the calibrate. And we'll say from this point to this point is 20 millimeters. So we've got our image. You can see we place it on any of these planes. And if I OK, I can right click and transform. But I want to place it on here. Again, I can use the alignment. 
clicking on the object, that's not going to move. And then control clicking, take it from the tree view to make our life easier. And this is going to be the object that's going to be moved, the object that's going to be aligned. Again, come up to edit and alignment. Here's the movable object and we need some points on here. So I'm going to sketch three points by just clicking three points. Let's go for four. So we can place more than three if we want to do Let's go for four as long as we pick four points on this side. Let's come in, let's pick a vertex. And somewhere along here. And the other points. First point, it will be anchored to. That's right click and align. And now we've aligned our reference image so we can start sketching in the sketcher. So I hope you found that video useful and I hope to see you in a new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.